So today on Project Shop, we're gonna take apart this massive 175 amp V8 generator. This thing's actually got a three phase stator on it. Really wanna keep it, but most likely it's gonna wind up going through the uh, stator record. The engine whisperer wants to keep the V8 engine here. They're probably gonna bury him with a pile of V8s and uh, V twins. <laughs> But what we're going to do is remove all this stuff, recover this nice copper brass radiator. My main interest is in this framework down here in the bottom. What I've been wanting to do for a long time is build a steel pallet to hold all of my steel stock. If you look around the shop, I have steel plates, aluminum stock. This is like, I don't know, eight to nine foot sticks of uh, aluminum flat bar that I got from a job. I recovered this half inch thick uh, aluminum plate from another job. We got some, I think this is steel. We got the Unistrut. And then back over here, I have a pile of plywood, plexiglass, and a bunch of other wood stock. Then over here, I have an absolute explosion of steel stock and whatnot. So we're gonna try to get all this cleaned up. I gotta get back to that shelf. I wanna take that shelf down and we're gonna clean up this whole area back here. But before we can do any of that, we need to have a place to put this steel and sort it so we can actually see and know what we got. So what we're gonna do is remove all this stuff, get it down to the steel. We're actually gonna shorten this, probably cut it back here somewhere so we can get underneath this with a pallet, probably deck it with them plates right there. And we have, it's probably hard to see out here, but I have a bunch of pallet rack things. We're gonna build the steel structure frame to uh, hold all this stuff. So basically we're gonna use scrap to hold our scrap uh, keepers, what I like to call them. So we're gonna let the engine whisperer do his thing and tear this thing down on a time lapse. I'm gonna go in there and finish editing the video for you guys, and then we'll see how far we get with this project. All right, here we go. We got this thing apart. This thing uh, pretty much came apart pretty easy. It's just super heavy. And we got massive chunks of copper. Big old knot down in there. Look at all that copper. Big knot there. There's knots back there. Copper, copper. There's probably more copper up in here. So Steve's gonna keep that engine. We're gonna put it on a pallet real quick. And eventually we're gonna put it on this engine stand right here and then we're gonna tear this box off of here and then we'll palletize this stuff with the other staters that we have. And we're about to have one, two, three, four more decent sized ones to add to the pile. And not this weekend, but hopefully next weekend we're gonna make big headways with the stator wrecker because our electric motors and staters are piling up to the point where we got a lot of money in copper sitting on the floor over here. So uh, we wanna get that out and get set up to where we can start bringing these in on the daily.
Okay, there you have it. Steve did a great job at tearing this thing right down. He said it came apart pretty easy. Once he made that cut down there, that thing slid right out. Now, in my experience, on the smaller ones that I've done, usually there'd be like a weld or a bolt or something holding it in. But as you can see, these ones here had a big gap and kind of slid right out. So we got all that copper there, all that down there, and then all this over here. Now, as big as that thing is, I would thought that would have been much bigger. I'm actually surprised it's smaller. And this thing was three-phase, so you would expect that it would have more copper, but I guess not. I mean, compared to those little ones, the two-cylinder ones, these There's are pretty big. There's a lot into that. A That's lot. a big knot, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're gonna add this to our stator pile. This stuff's gonna go to the scrap yard. We're gonna save the isolators, and then we're gonna build a steel rack out of this thing here. Okay, we're back at it. We got this frame from that generator and we're gonna make a steel rack out of it for all of the uh, sheet, like the sheet panels and all the stock and stuff I get uh, that is just spread out all over the shop. If you look at every single corner and every wall, there's steel and it just gets worse and worse as we go around until the absolute nightmare mess that's in the corner there. And uh, we're gonna straighten all that out with this custom-made steel rack made from scrap. So I have these nine-foot pallet rack uh, cross supports. I got four of them. And what we're gonna do is cut them at five foot. It'll give us uh, four five-foot sections and four four-foot sections that we're gonna weld on here. And because this is gonna sit in the back over there, this is how we're gonna do it. Um, one, two, three, four five-foot sections. And that's going to be like the core support that's going to hold everything. We're going to kind of reinforce it with little gussets and whatever. And then the front, we're going to drop it down because the bigger stock will kind of be on the back. And we're going to do some type of grid. I was going to use this stuff. I mean, we probably are going to use it, but Steve said we're going to lose a lot of surface area because of the angle. Like a wire, like a, a, a round, you know, half inch dowel would, would be the way to go with this. But I don't have enough of that to do what we need. But I got tons of this green stuff. So this will at least get us started and then uh, at least clean the shop up a little bit so we can actually get some work done around here. Okay, this thing's coming along great. What we're gonna do next is use some of this steel that I cut off the shelving that I had taken apart to build this uh, shelving unit in here. I got plenty of that stuff. We're gonna use it for the deck and a couple other pieces. So these five foot things, I don't know if the floor was really uneven or that frame is actually bent, but when that's sitting on the floor, you can see this side's actually up. So the frame might be bent. This isn't something that's critical, but I did get some pretty straight. I just used a little torpedo level. And um, for the most part, it came out pretty good. Now I'm no welder, but that little Lincoln 110 welder does a real good job at laying down some uh, beads. You just got to take your time with it. This is a 140 HD, which I think at the time when I bought this was the biggest 110 welder you can buy before they step up to 220 so this does a pretty good job you can actually weld half inch plate with it if you take your time and do a couple passes i really wouldn't recommend it unless you did that in emergency but i've done it and it worked out great for this thickness of steel this thing is working great i'm using 
can't see it, but this is Lincoln uh, flux core wire, so we're not using shielding gas. And I'm welding like probably one and a half inches, two inches at a time. And then this machine has like a duty cycle where you're supposed to let it uh, cool off for a minute. So I always like to tap the welds with the hammer. And then when you're using flux core, you get a lot of like black soot and other stuff. It's good to clean it off with a brush and then it just makes for a better weld. And when we're welding dirty stuff like this with paint and rust, flux core wire works better than uh, gas shielding, or at least that's what I've found. So now what we need to do we're going to cut a bunch of these, get them welded in there. I need to weld these plates in there because this beam is actually going to sit a little offset to match the other one. So it's going to have to sit on that. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to run like a brace from here up to there. And probably the same thing here. I'll do a little, little triangle brace. Um, main thing is so that this doesn't uh let the plywood fall i think this is going to work great but we're gonna have a four foot section here that we can stand full sheets four by eight sheets of steel plywood plexiglass and then in the front here we're going to make something where we can slide in long stuff and it'll kind of lock it in there and then back here we're going to have a slanted rack we'll probably start it you know up here somewhere and then bring it down to about a foot maybe or two feet or whatever maybe we'll bring it down to a foot and we'll start up here and then we're just going to make rows that way we can stick all the stock in there and um see what we got and then maybe actually get some projects done around here <laughs> Okay, this is how far we got it's late we're about to uh, pack it up over here but we just finished notching out the deck on this side we're gonna be piecing this together but we got all the uh, framework for the floor done and uh, now we're just gonna test and see if this piece slides in there So we just need to trim a little bit off of that right there and that'll sit flush. I'm actually going to weld that in place. And then that's, that's going to be plenty strong for uh, stacking the stock on. And then over here, we're going to have to piece together a couple little pieces. This 
space here is going to be for full sheets, 4x8 sheets. And then the front half over here is going to be for tall, tall, like 8 to 10 foot stock or whatever. We're going to have slots that you can just kind of push the stuff into. And then up here, I haven't figured what I'm going to do with this space here because I didn't want to weld this out here on this rinky beam. I wanted this welded on to something really solid. Okay, we got that notched out, we got that setting in there nice. A little bit of gap there, but that don't matter. So tomorrow I'll weld that in place and then we'll work on decking this. I'm gonna bust these off, man. Do we have any paint? Oh, we're gonna paint it. The bottom's gonna be black and the, anything up here is gonna be orange. I got enough paint to do it. Okay, we're back at it. We got the deck all cut. Now this is just random bits of sheet metal that I've saved from, you know, that was probably an electrical panel and who knows what this was from. But we managed to get uh, ones with a lip, so it's gonna contain our stuff. But it pretty much, uh, I just had to cut that one in half. And uh, I marked all this out, Steve cut it up, came out pretty good. Now there was only one issue right here where I got a slight gap, or we're gonna have a slight gap uh, right here. I don't think it's gonna be a big issue. I don't want a gap over here, so I, I'll just leave that. Maybe I'll patch it in or something. Matter of fact, that's what I'll do. I'll patch that in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start with this piece down there, and I'm just gonna tack weld this in here. It really ain't gotta be nothing structural or important. Steve's already started cutting me the braces. What I'm gonna do is uh, uh, a level of braces at two and a half feet, one up here at the top at five foot, so it pretty much contains it. And then I'm gonna, I think I have some flat bar. I'm gonna do a support from here up to here, okay? And what that's gonna do, that's gonna be pretty much what's gonna support this whole side. So when I lean four by eight sheets or, or whatever up against here, it's not just these columns. I mean, these things are stout. I mean, I can pull on that, pick this whole thing up. I think if I just left that the way it is, we'd be okay. But I am gonna put one support down here. This will be like the main column that's gonna kind of secure everything. And then we're gonna have a, a nice little pallet here. Now, I welded these things all the way around yesterday. And then I really started looking at it. These things aren't even welded all the way around. They like here and here is like a weld, but it's just tacked in the other spots. So if they do break, it's not gonna be on my weld, hopefully. It would probably be on the original weld of this thing but these things are rated for a lot of weight so i'm sure those welds were done by a professional not like me and my welds <laughs> so i'm gonna get right on this i'm gonna start with this plate back here and uh, get that squared up and everything is going to kind of fall in i got a little bit of wiggle room it ain't got to be nothing fancy or nice it's it's just going to be holding some stock you know and already with them loose me standing on this thing uh this thing's pretty stout you know it's going to do what I needed to do really well. We're gonna gain a lot of space here in the shop and actually see what I had to work with when I'm doing projects.
Okay, here's where we're at. We got most of the structure up and um, together. Now, this back wall is going to be really what I'm going to be leaning a lot of stuff against. And I kind of screwed up that middle one uh, is kind of in and I actually welded it in place. Now, if this was actually really important, I would cut the welds right there, bend that back out. But it's not really a big deal. That strap there is basically going to hold. That's going to be the, that column is basically going to be the main support keeping this thing from opening up. And this one's got a strap too. Now what I'm going to do, got these two levels here. I'm going to drop some flat bar like this on this angle. And it's going to stop right there. These boxes are actually going to be mounted there. And this flat bar is going to be what I'm going to tie my cross members. And I'm going to make a grid up here out of all that. I think that's half inch rod. Or at least I'm going to attempt to. So I need to get that in there. Make the grid. And I'm actually going to weld two more of these orange posts. One right here and one right there. And we're going to make another corral right here like this one. Except for this is just going to have slots. Like however deep this is right here. Okay, there'll be slots. Like six inch wide slots down here that we can stick some really tall material in. And, you know, there'll be either a chain or there'll be something out here that you just open it, you can pull your pieces out, lock it back in. You're not gonna have to pick it up out of this thing. Now these ones here, this is just gonna be a permanent angle like, like that with a grid. And you'll have to slide the piece, like if this stock was in there, you'd have to bring it like up and then out but these are all going to be four to five foot pieces six foot maybe eight footers or whatever you know we'll see how it goes but we're coming together good and we're utilizing a lot of scrap that we had laying around
Okay, we're not completely finished, but you can get a good idea of what I was going for now. Now I was running out of this uh, round rod, so I was actually splicing ends together. You see there's a short piece, and then there's some pieces down there I need to splice in. But all this is burned in. That's pretty much tacked in there. I'm actually running out of welding wire. The little Lincoln uh, Weld Pack 140 was laying down bead all day long. So what we have to do now is we're gonna, um, we've got the pieces cut already to go these bars this way, here. Now we're debating on whether to chop these down and angle this, I don't know. I think we'll just leave it like that. We're thinking about we could just put stuff down in here, but I think we're gonna cap all these, or at least the ones back there. But what we're gonna do up here is we got two round pipes that are gonna come up and then get welded into here. And then there'll be uh, three kind of bays right here where I can stick like long material like this. You'll be able to uh, open, open the little bay drop it in there and it'll be you know locked in and secured in there like that and then this back here this is this would actually probably be like you know in that slot and then smaller and smaller even smaller stuff and then we actually have this spot here we're going to do the same thing as we're going to do here kind of we're going to make a little corral we're going to come out down out and down with a thing and i can lay you know some tall stuff in here whatnot and then this whole section here is going to be for plywood uh, sheets of steel um, pretty much anything sheet uh, the plexiglass i got so i think this is going to work out pretty good are we going to get all the steel i have in the shop in here steve don't think so but we're going to try <laughs> so we're going to call it for tonight it's probably like 2 30 3 o'clock in the morning right now see you back here tomorrow tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. So we're gutting this giant automatic transfer switch and check this coolness out, man. They like built the whole circuit out of old school, like burlap. Yeah. Looks like, I don't know, it's aluminum wire or that's tin coated, but we're gonna get into it. It looks like copper or brass hardware or it's just rusty, but it looks like brass. That bus bar. Sounds like copper. <laughs> We're gonna recover these uh, perches that it was bolted to. And actually, I'm gonna bolt it right back onto it so we can 
actually try to get this thing working, check this stuff out. This thing is bad to the bone. This is what we're after right here. We're gonna try to get this out and we're gonna put this on my wire stripper. <laughs> and if we can't get this one working, we got another one right here. We're gonna try to get this one working as well. drain it into something but this thing's pretty simple it's got a safety switch here and i think that's why youtube uh limited my thing so i bypassed that and had this open but this thing runs a cycle i guess it has a pressure switch and uh you can see here how many it's done it looks like 26,045 or 20 2,649 filters so that's a lot you can see that thing going back up and there you go you got yourself a little mini pancake filter <laughs> that thing's solid now it feels a lot heavier now that it's um crushed so basically i bought this thing originally for the hydraulics and what happened was at the time i was in a place kind of similar to this where all my neighbors were automotive people so Basically, I charge them to collect all their oil and their filters. I charge them 25 bucks a drum for the oil, 25 bucks a drum for the filters. I would crush them, uh, get the oil. Once these are crushed, the scrap yard will buy that as, um, you know, sheet steel. You just got to squeeze the oil out of it. And then uh, I would uh, clean the oil, cut it with uh, gasoline or diesel fuel, and run it in my truck as fuel. So they, basically they were paying me for my fuel. And uh, the way the prices of fuel are, we're going to get back into doing something like that over here because I'm in, kind of in the same situation. I have an unlimited supply of fuel surrounding me. Sometimes you just got to scrap out the whole parking lot. <laughs>